Welcome. Thank you for joining us here on a Tuesday evening for our 10th annual Hudson Data Jam Award Ceremony and Celebration. I'm really excited to share so many incredible projects that students have created this year. Um, to kick this off, I want to invite our president of the Cary Institute, Dr. Joshua Ginsburg, to welcome us. Good evening. Um, as Becky said, I'm Josh Ginsburg. I'm president of Cary Institute. Now, Hudson Data Jam and the Data Jams in general, and much of our education work is very special to us for a number of reasons. I think most importantly, we love students, but we don't have any of our own. So when we can work with students, when we can provide an experiential learning through data analysis and uh, not just the analysis, but the visualization of that data and merging art and science so that people can communicate better, it's a real thrill for us because we don't do it every day. And so we're really grateful for it. For me, it's particularly special because I've been at the Institute for eight, almost nine years, and this is my ninth data jam. So I just missed the first one. And every year the projects get more creative, the media changes, and we are just so grateful that you are able to use your creativity and share it uh, with us and with the world. Um, as many of you know, Cary Institute is based in Millbrook, New York. We do large-scale ecological research, looking at how different factors affect the ecosystems. And one of the areas we've worked in for almost 40 years is the Hudson River. So the Hudson Data Jam is also a reflection of a core part of our mission. And so we're grateful that you guys can be part of that now as well. Uh, finally, I'll say every year, the number of sponsors grows. And as you can see from this slide, I'm not gonna name them all, they're all up there, but I do wanna thank them because they help not just make this possible, but they help make it better by allowing us to do more and to bring more uh, to this award ceremony and also to the program itself. So I will thank uh, Becky, Ashley, and Alan for their remarkable uh, work and leadership on this project. And I will hand back over to Becky and make myself go, uh, go uh, both quiet and invisible. So welcome and thank you for all your hard work and I look forward to seeing it. Thank you very much, Josh. And thank you also for reminding me to introduce myself. My name is Becky Van Tassel. I'm an education program leader at Cary. And this is my first year that I've had the pleasure of coordinating this program. Um, and to tell you a little bit more about the history and the uh, conception of the project, I'm gonna introduce uh, our, my esteemed boss, Dr. Alan Berkowitz, to tell us a little bit more about Data Jam. Well, I think what I have to say is data, data, data come and I want to go jump. Data, data, data come and I want to go jump. The first person that started a data jam was shown in the top left corner here, Stephanie Bessemeyer, way out there in the desert of North of New Mexico who ran the Desert Data Jam starting 21, I mean, <laughs> I can't add, 11 years ago. We started a year or so later. Um, Leah Harris started our first Data Jam in 2014. Um, and we had also a Data Jam in Baltimore that Bess Kaplan ran. Many people have run our Data Jam since 2014 and, and we're delighted that Becky and Ashley who ran last year are, are with us now. Um, we have a data jam in the Northeast U.S. Um, off the coast of the Northeast U.S. that Annette Brinkley works and one down in Puerto Rico. So we have an esteemed um, group of colleagues that are all getting students to jam on data. So you, you show the next slide. Um, this is kind of one way of jamming on data. Here's these crazy scientists pouring data into the hopper and out comes these beautiful graphs. And you folks got crazy data sets and you found interesting things out them from them and you creatively displayed them. And we're just so happy and lucky to celebrate with you tonight. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Becky. Thanks, Alan. So uh, for our judges or folks who maybe didn't actually do the data jam, which our advisors and our students certainly know this, but our Data Jam journey starts with these data sets that have been generated by scientists at the Cary Institute and other organizations that are studying the Hudson River and its watershed. Students 
spend time learning background information about the topic. They take that data set and work to visualize it, to make graphs, to compare different variables, see what kind of story they can find in that data. From there, they write a report and, and channel their creativity to find a way to communicate the story of that data in an artistic, creative way. So our students are using so many different data sets. So in 2023, here are all the different data sets that Data Jammers used this year. They used 30 different data sets, which means when our judges judged, they may have gotten four or five projects that had four or five different data sets that they then learned about through the process of judging. And as we can see, some data sets are more popular than others. These are our top 10 data sets. So we're going to see lots of projects tonight from our wildlife distribution and abundance data set, from our data set about sea level change, about Hurricane Sandy, and our other uh, popular data sets. Lots of these data sets deal with global change issues, which are topics that teachers address in their classrooms every year with students as we study how uh, our ecosystems are changing in the face of climate change. So our students are uh, creative masters. This year, here's the breadth of different types of creative projects our students did this year. So as you can see, most students made a model or a video or a film of their data. So those are our most common. We have everything from songs to musicals to interactive games, engineered, uh, programming, interactives. We have so many different types of ways that students have channeled their creativity to tell the story of their data. We're really, really proud of this because it can be a tough thing. And in many of our students' reflections, they wrote that one of the hardest parts was coming up with what the creative project was going to be. But I'll say to the students in the audience, you smashed it out of the park. Some wonderful projects here. So, just wanted to give you a few more pieces of data about Data Jam. This year we had 16 schools submit projects. At those 16 schools, there were 20 different advisors. Our advisors are often classroom teachers, but not necessarily. We had 65 volunteer judges to uh, volunteer their time to judge these projects. Students submitted 118 projects this year, and that represented 260 students. These students are spread throughout the Hudson Valley region, all the way from downstate in Jersey City and Manhattan to upstate as far as uh, um, Rhinebeck High School and right here locally uh, in Dutchess County. So here's a little uh, taste of some of the different projects students submitted.
celebration, you can go to our website to see lots of these were stills from incredible videos and stop animation. So it's just a taste of all the wonderful things we have made. So let's get down to the fun part. So here's how we're gonna award prizes tonight. We have three categories based on ages of student participants. So we have our elementary division, which is our junior data jam, will award honorable mentions, runners up, and a grand prize for our junior data jam participants. Our Hudson data jam is divided into our middle school and our high school age levels. And as you can see, we're giving more prizes in our middle school category because we had many more middle school submissions than our high school or elementary uh, category. So we wanted to honor all the wonderful projects there. So we'll be giving a, a overall prize for middle school and then a prize for each level of the data set. So the data sets we provide students are uh, grouped into three levels based on the complexity of the data sets. We'll also award runners up and honorable mentions for each of those levels within the middle school division. And then for high school, we'll uh, award uh, prizes to honorable mentions, runners up and the grand prize. At the end, we also are very pleased to be able to offer three special prizes from our sponsors, the Rising Young Scientist Award, a Budding Naturalist Award, and an award for extraordinary creativity. So what do you say? Shall we do some awards? Now, it's weird for me to sit here in silence because if I had you in an auditorium, you'd all be hooting and hollering, and clapping and waving your hands. So I'm gonna invite you all to unmute after each category so we can show some appreciation and awe for the projects we're gonna see. Please feel free to use the chat to show your support and love for these students and the work that they did. All right, let's get started with junior data jams. These are our youngest students in grades four and five. Yeah. Our honorable mention projects, we have Afshin and her classmate who did a stop animation project on the wildlife distribution and abundance in managed ecosystems data set, and Kalyani who made an interactive scratch program exploring fossil pollen. Well done. All right, our runners up. In Shit. our junior data jam division, we have Adita and Vihan who made another interactive in, uh, and a quiz for the PCBs in the Hudson River data set, and Sophie and Sophia from the Hudson Montessori School who made a beautiful art piece of artwork exploring the invasive zebra mussels in the Hudson Valley. Congratulations! Yay! Woo! All right. <laughs> And that leaves our grand prize for elementary school for a group of four, Elijah, Neil, Caden, and Joel from the Hudson Montessori School. Are you sorry now? That was their project. This group wow. made a wonderful game where they, after analyzing the data set on sea level change at Battery Park, made a game that explored the causes and solutions for climate change. So let's watch just a little bit of their presentation about their game. Hi! For the 2023 Hudson River Data Jam, we made a game called Are You Sorry? Each color describes a known topic and each player has to, has to pick a color. Blue means for pollution, uh, red means for climate change, green means uh, cutting down trees, and yellow means using too much electricity. If you land in a color, you pick up a card correlating to the category or color. So if you land on Let's say red, and you get out. You go. To, you go to red, and you pick up a card, and it says prevent. Yes, you use renewable energy. Move up two spaces. And okay. If you finish, if you finish, you're 25 percent um, done with the problem. And orange space means you move three steps forward, and black space means you move one step back. <laughs> um, uh, in order all right let's give this group a round of a hand for their wonderful game well done Yay! clap 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 clap, clap. <laughs> all right well done junior data jam we hope to see lots more schools participate in our junior data jam division oh, all right again <laughs> all right we're gonna jump to high school these are our students who are in grades 9 through 12 in our high school division so we have some honorable mention project, projects in our high school division that go to Catherine at Rhinebeck High School for their 
uh, Scratch Interactive on the Wildlife Distribution and Abundance and Managed Ecosystems data set. And Charlie is at Arlington High School. We made a wonderful stop animation uh, video of how uh, pharmaceuticals end up in our waterway, really diving deep into uh, wastewater and wastewater treatment. So congratulations, honorable mentions. Yay. All right, our runners up in the high school division were three groups, Sophia, Sydney, Olivia, and Alexa from Avenues the World School, who made a diorama of three different environments in the Hudson River uh, that drive fish diversity. Emma and Emily at Arlington High School, who made a stop animation video exploring and explaining biomagnification and its effects on fish populations. And Andre from the Millbrook School made a wonderful podcast exploring population changes in Hudson River fish species. That QR code goes to Andre's uh, podcast. So well done, runners up for high school. Yay! Congratulations. And our grand prize for the high school division goes to one of the most creative pieces we have seen. Shay and Elena from Ossining High School for the Branch Lurette Love in the Holocene. This project took data from that the tree pollen data, with the paleobotany data, and they made a, a mock episode of the Bachelorette based on the different tree species looking to find true love in the Holocene. I'm not going to show the video because they have some classmates in there that I don't have permission to show their faces, but we will hopefully get that and we'll share that with you on our website soon. But congrats to our winners for our high school division. Woo! Yeah! All right. Now, our, our middle school division, we had um, 90... 94 middle school projects. And so we have lots of projects to highlight and showcase in this middle age division. These are students who are in grades six through eight. And so in this division, we're gonna start with our level one data sets. These uh, data sets are, you can choose any data set you want and it doesn't always uh, correlate to how difficult it is to create a creative project. So here's our uh, Level one honorable mention students. Aisling from Marymount School with a beautiful display board on climate change and its effects on sea level at Battery Park. And Malia, Julia, and Ava, also from the Marymount School, who made a wonderful interactive game exploring the relationship between ticks and mouse population. Congratulations. Go Marymount. That's right, go Marymount. <laughs> All right, our runners up in the level one category go to a group from Marymount, again, uh, exploring sea level change at Battery Park. And this project, they made a, a, a music video of them dancing and singing to tell the story of sea level change. And Stella and Cameron, who made a double-sided display, one side with a beautiful diorama of the Hudson River uh, ecosystem at different depths and the other side with their data and explanation of how different um, native and invasive species impact populations in the Hudson River. Congratulations, runners up from Marymount. <laughs> and our level one winner who I had the pleasure of working with during while he was working on his project goes to Charlie from Longfellow Middle School, who created the daily evening show of wildlife. Well done, Charlie. <laughs> he used the wildlife uh, da uh, da data set to look at a species that he holds near and dear to his heart. So we're going to watch Charlie's daily wildlife. Good evening. Welcome back to the daily evening show of wildlife. Today, we will be talking about the white-tailed deer. You know, the deer that are seen pretty much every, everywhere. I see them all the time and everywhere I go. I'm pretty sure you've seen deer before. You can find them in both common places and strange places. 
in late spring and lose them in winter. It is a problem when their population grows too much because it impacts the cycle of wildlife. Since we see them a lot, we wonder a lot about them. Do they thrive everywhere? I also wondered when they prefer to show up. I also wondered if different habitats mattered. Like, do deer have any preferences since we see them everywhere? When I started to do research, that's when I saw that deer showed up most in the gloom instead of the day and night. I Good evening. Welcome back to the day. Congratulations, Charlie, for your detailed and uh, persistence in your project. Well done. Woo! All right, we're going to move on to the <laughs> Hey, Charlie, well done. <laughs> All right, our level two students. So we have lots of projects to highlight here at level two. Our honorable mention students are Arnie from Irvington Middle School for a project on the way the um, uh, American Eel Life Cycle did a stop animation video. And Condi and Kaylin from Hudson Montessori School that created a musical exploring the invasive zebra mussels in the river. Congratulations. Woo! <laughs> All right, our runners up for our level two category are Andy and Sequoia from Oakwood Friends School that explored what happened during Hurricane Sandy. They created a wonderful song where they took on the persona Woo! of Hurricane Sandy and Hurricane Irene, and they duked it out about which one was worse. And then Anya and Remy from Packard Collegiate Institute that modeled turbidity based on uh, Hurricane Sandy in the river. So congratulations, runners up for level two. Well done. <laughs> All right, and our level two award goes to Riley and Claire from Marymount School for their project on wildlife populations and black bears in New York, in Millbrook, New York. Congratulations, Riley. <laughs> Riley and Claire created three-dimensional models to show a uh, population changes over time. So we're going to watch a little bit of Riley and Claire explaining some of their models. Hi, I'm Riley Barefoot. I'm Claire Kennedy. How does the bear activity in autumn differ with the environment stakes and day periods in Millbrook, New York? Studies have this graph represents the three day periods bear show activity. 11 bear show activity in gloom, 5 bear show activity at night, and 15 bear show activity throughout the day. This graph represents the two separate habitats that bears pass by. Around 23 bears pass through low for habitats in September and October. Around 7 bears pass by upland of habitats through September and October. All right, let's hear it up for Riley and Claire and their 3D models. Well done. Woo! Woo! Awesome. All right. Hi, I'm Riley Barefoot. Thank you, Riley. Okay, moving on to level three, Hudson Data Jam. Here are our honorable mentions for level three. We have Amaya, Marigold, and Ava from Packer Collegiate who created a model of blood lead levels color-coded based on prevalence in different counties in New York. Uh, and Billy and Jackson, who made a animated video exploring paleobotany data. And Maddie and Anjali, who from Packer Collegiate, who did a, a actual demonstration modeling uh, the effect of different plants in the Hudson River wetlands. Well done, all of you. Congratulations. I had to choose a lot of projects for middle school because there were too many to choose from. Our judges love them all. All right, our level three runners up are Tomas, Hudson, and Dane from Packer Collegiate, whose project titled Car Air Pollution Needs a Solution modeled the respiratory hazards of car pollution. Avi and Avarva, sorry, from Hudson Montessori School, who did a beautiful stop animation with, that's right, real cilantro in there, about uh, the different macroinvertebrates and how they colonize different 
plant species of plants in the Hudson River, and Emma, Josie, and Claudia, who did uh, also use the blood lead uh, data set to visualize uh, different uh, impacts on different populations. So well done to our runners up. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Okay, and that brings us to our level three award for middle school goes to Grace and her classmate from Packer Collegiate for PCORBs. I did a project that visualized the biomagnification of PCBs and Hudson River fish. So let's listen to them explain their model. Introducing the PC Orbeez project. As you can see, we have made a food web of certain species of fish in the Hudson River ecosystem, and below them we have small plastic balls filled with Orbeez that represent the fish's average PCB levels. The Orbeez and the PPM of PCBs are at a scale with one Orbee equaling 0.05 parts per million in PCBs. Not only do the Orbeez show individual PCB levels, but they also show the biomagnification process. For example, if we start at the mollusk, it has a small PCB level. It is then eaten by an alewife, which is then eaten by a channel catfish. This displays how as contaminated organisms are eaten along the food web, PCB or polychlorinated biphenyls build up in their tissue, causing their predator to eat more PCBs and so on. We can also notice by this web that the channel catfish is the tertiary consumer or the top predator because it eats most of the other fish. Because of this, it also has the highest PCB level. You may notice that two of the balls are filled with different color Orbeez. This is to display the fact that the mollusk and the alewives PCB level data was not available to us. So after research and calculations, we came up with an estimate of their average level. All right, let's give it up for our level three winner. Well done. Woo! Woo! Uh, All right. <laughs> Introduce. All right, so now the moment you've been waiting for. For, for our middle school division, we just went through all three levels, but our judges chose an overall winner for our middle school level. So this, out of all of our middle school projects, the highest ranked prize for middle school goes to Elias Sacken and their classmate from Packer Collegiate for a microcosmic storm, three days of data in the Hudson. Well done. Woo! And their project took the data and made an interactive, uh, an interactive using programming language to show the relationship between rainfall and pollutant levels and nutrient levels in the Hudson River. And so, in this uh, project, I'm going to show you how they uh, their augmented reality Hudson Data Jam. <laughs> Here is our 3D town. It is divided into two parts, the side with the factory for nitrate and the side with the farm for phosphorus. The factory is a point source so it constantly pumps nitrate into the river. This is why in our data set, nitrate levels go down since there is the same amount of nitrate but more water. Nitrate levels start at 2.19 and go down to 1.71. These results are minor algal blooms that will come up later in the video, which are caused because nitrate is a fertilizer and it makes algae grow. When the storm starts, the rain falls, increasing the rainfall levels from 0 mm per hour all the way up to 1.91 mm per hour. The runoff from the storm picks up phosphorus which is commonly used as a fertilizer in farms, and the phosphorus gets swept into the river, raising phosphorus levels from 0 0.1 to 0 0.34. This it starts with rainfall. That raises the water depth from 47 centimeters to 70, and increases the flow of water from one cubic meter per second to three. That brings in suspended solids, which go from 3 parts per million to 44 parts per million, and decreases the level of sodium, chloride, sulfate, and nitrate to 82%. Hudson Data. I tried out this group's augmented reality thing at my desk. It was a really incredible way to interact with and visualize the data set that they work with. Well done, our last group from our middle school division. All right. Woo! 
Yeah, give more more round of applause. There's a lot of that. <laughs> All right. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for our funders. Like like Dr. Ginsburg said, uh, we wouldn't be able to offer the programming that we do. We wouldn't have a data jam if it weren't for the generosity of our, our funders. So we have three special prizes to award tonight to honor three of our um, supporters to data jam. Our first prize goes to a project that had extraordinary creativity, a project that stood out to our judges as being uniquely creative. And this award sponsored by Marshall and Sterling goes to Isabel and Alyssa from the Marymount School for the Hudson Rivers Sea Level Rise. In their project, they created an advertising campaign to motivate people to think about uh, climate change and sea level rise in New York City. So they re-envisioned a big apple uh, in the shape of an apple. The gray of the top represents the clouds raining and the greenery at the bottom of the apple represents what we can do with our infrastructure to uh, combat sea level rise in New York City. So well done uh, team for this very creative and effective advertising campaign. Yay! <laughs> All right, our second special award from the Millwork Garden Club is for a budding naturalist, a project that stood out for us in terms of their ability to uh, think about our natural ecosystems and work with those data sets. So this award goes to Ainsley from Oakwood Friends School for her project, A Deer in Headlights. Yay! Yay. <laughs> in this project, Ainsley, All right, Ainsley a stop animation video to show uh, wildlife. So we're gonna look at, uh, watch some of this right now. There's so many things I love about the lowland plains. Sun, open space, access to running water, I think I might be forgetting something. Oh, right. Deer. <laughs> Run for your lives! <laughs> Let's not go back there. I heard there are bears at the stream sometimes as well. There's so much I love about the upland forest. There's shade, abundant food, we're far from humans, and there's great cover for hiding from hunters. That was close. <laughs> All right, well done, Ainsley, for this wonderful stop animation. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, our final award sponsored by m and Bank for Rising Young Scientists. We highlighted this award for the depth, detail, and um, nuance in their analysis of their data set. This, uh, this project really stood out to our judges in the way that uh, these students approach their analysis. And this goes to Carson and their classmate from Packer Collegiate for the underlying cause of elevated blood lead levels. Well done. Carson and your classmate, here's their project. Yay! In this project, they use this beautiful visualization of the blood level data, which we've seen some other visualizations too. And this is what's great about Data Jam is that different students visualize their data in different and also effective ways using those color-coded popsicle sticks to represent uh, rates of um, blood lead in different populations in New York. So congratulations to Carson and your classmate for a wonderful analysis of this data set. Yay! All right. All right, one really big round of applause for all of our wonderful students. Shout them out. Thank you so much. Well done, everybody. That's right, guys. Great job. Great work, everybody. We know that a lot of time and effort and sometimes frustration uh, went into these projects. So we wanted to thank students for persevering and uh, going into depth and doing wonderful work to uh, bring life to these data sets that scientists have created and, and, they're, and they're being shared and we're still learning from these data sets. 
Thank you to our advisors for the time that you put in to uh, help the students develop their trust and their data analysis skills. Our 65 volunteer judges who took time out of their day to uh, judge all of these projects, the students who made really uh, thorough projects, which meant we had a lot of reading to do. So thank you for your time. I especially wanted to shout out Ashley Allred on the education staff here at Cary for orienting me and, and letting me hit the ground running with this new project as I joined the staff and the rest of the education staff for their uh, their thoughts and support as we work through this. All of our sponsors who are displayed here on the screen, your generosity lets us continue to run this program. We also have a huge amount of support from the Cary community. A large number of those judges come from our own Cary community who also volunteer their time to judge. Our Data Jam network, all those folks that uh, Alan talked about earlier tonight, their insights from running their Data Jams help us make ours better. And for all of you here right now that joined us to celebrate this showcase of projects. So thank you for being here. And we'll see you next year for more Data Jamming. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a good night.